So it's Locke. I'm sure you all know how Locke plays. Welcome, my lovelies. 2 1v1 between Pringa Proxy and Admiral General. This is the point at which we realise the players have probably already spawned in and we can't see those because it's glitched. Nope, they just hadn't spawned in. <laughs> but they have now, so we're on the North Pole, we've got Admiral General in black, or Gunmetal Grey, with his lovely Stickman 9000 commander going bots first. Air second after a 1 1. Meanwhile, on the South Pole. We got Proingo Proxy in blue, currently at the top of the ladder. Admiral General near the top of the ladder, indeed. So it's going to be. I think uh, Admiral General sort of floating around mid bottom of Uber. So both Uber players. You know, rank doesn't really mean a huge amount, but bots then, air, and then vehicle, vehicle, vehicles from Proxy. So what do we think about this? Well, bots will be able to give you your mobility early game to go and expand and grab a whole bunch of mechs. Around the back, do not forget that there's a whole bunch of mechs missing here. There's, I think, a couple on there. Maybe one or two out here. Possibly one back there. I think there are a couple out here as well, if I remember. But, uh, yeah, so the bots are going to have the mobility. They can also go around raiding really well because Locke is just so balanced in favour of the aggressor. I think there's a uh, Elodea put a very, very technical and analysed thread on the forums about it. And how uh, troop movements, if used wisely on lock, uh, you can completely just run rings around your opponent because of the way the ramps are shaped for the defender. It's it's really awkward for them. Firefly Scout coming out though from Admiral. Gonna see the uh, bot fabricators moving out in different directions. Going to pop it down there. It's probably going to get shot by that dox as it moves past. That's unfortunate placement for the uh, Firefly there. But it does manage to see this bot fabricator here. Are we going to see a bomber follow up? Interceptor instead. Going to fight this one off. Another bit of scouting from that interceptor. I don't see why that's an issue. But yeah, the transition to vehicles later on is an interesting one on this map because of uh, just fighting down the lanes and also the defense and the general durability of the vehicles and uh, of course the air game is going to be important going later on as well but bots almost invariably early game in games of lock because of how they can fire up the cliffs as well you don't even need grenadiers to do that, docks can do it and if you have uh, undefended corners like this you can just fire up and harass corner mechs which is uh, even more horrible. As we see, Proxy moving his uh, few docks here. He's probably going to target that Met just up there. And we'll see that as a result. Probably go down, and there's not really too much you can do about it. There is a bomber here. I don't think it's going to respond in time. In fact, it's gone over here to try and... Oh, no, it is. It is going to respond in time. Nice. But you see there, case in point, you can fire up and uh, raid some mechs. Interceptors though coming in, that bomber needs to scarper <laughs> before they're led over the commander. Proxy obviously doesn't want to go over the commander with the interceptors before he takes too many losses. As a result, retreats. Admiral Poe pushing out the middle here. Let's have a look at his build queues. What has he got up? Oh, he hasn't put up any factories, so he's just going to be getting the mechs there. Proxy though, here, just sitting on these uh, mechs on this platform, content to just keep that under, under wrap, lock and key. But lots of vehicle factories now from Proxy. Nothing pushing out the back just yet. But he does have this uh, Dox Force here aggressing. Bomber though, managing to take down two there. The remaining, remaining ones can possibly uh, do a bit more damage. But they're not really any substantial raiding groups here. They need to be more substantial in their raiding. Um, I don't know, maybe ten or so and supported with interceptors constantly. Out the front now, we do see the ants beginning to form, the ant lines, with a few spinners as well. Now there's the airport, even if the interceptors are not there, and these guys will be able to push out. They'll either go up the middle, or they'll take a detour up this ramp here. I think if they only see a single point laser turret, they might decide, you know what, screw it, let's just go straight through. Um, because that's four mechs there to clear up, and uh, that would be a very good win for them. <coughs> Alternatively, they could break off, go tanks straight through the middle and docks off the side and raid these three mechs there and the four in the middle, and that'll be an even bigger win. It depends on what they scout. So they see here that this ramp is not a place they want to go. They also see mines coming out, so they'll probably put out a few skitters. 
if you see combat fabs apparently spewing stuff at nothing, then uh, first thing you want to do is get a skitter going. The interceptors there managing to scout and seeing unprotected mechs on this platform. And there you see the docks going straight over there thinking, yes, easy pickings. And yeah, the vehicle's going for the middle one, unsurprisingly, because there's only uh, a single point laser turret there to defend against it. So now, here is the thing of how it's so advantageous for the aggressor. Dividing and conquering is so easy to do if you're attacking, as you can see on lock here. And unless you have things like mines or turrets up, or invested heavily in your defense, you're really going to struggle to defend because your troop movements just have to go through jumping through a whole bunch of hoops before they can do anything useful. Uh, Bomber here though, is it going to get taken down? Yes it will! Very nice indeed there from the interceptors. Bomber can now go around and maybe take out... If it, why? Oh, okay, yeah. That makes sense. I was thinking, why is that the, uh, the um, Hermes icon, but it's just a mechs without a green splodge. But yeah, there's force from the middle now. Can't really push in, it doesn't have enough, so uh, wisely retreats. There's no point in pushing in if you're just going to lose the units for no gain. Coming over this side though, do we have skitters in the force? No, we do not as of yet. Oh dear, pro Inga proxy. You saw combat fab. Shame on you. You should have skitters in your army. The mines will punish you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, the mines. Goodbye tank force. Wow. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. But this force here from Proxy could be quite threatening. Let's have a quick look and picture in picture around the back there. We do see a bit of raiding coming in from Proxy around the back. Uh, could threaten this metal there. No, it won't. There's a uh, the single point laser. Meanwhile, in the bases, what do we have going on? Uh, no T2 coming up yet. Just more vehicle factories. Let's have a look in the army tab there. The eco tab is looking fairly stable. 10 for Proxy, 8 for Admiral General. Am uh, proxy obviously has the unit advantage there, and he's also managing to defend his uh, his ramps quite, uh, quite nicely here as well. Admiral suffering a little bit on the unit count now, because now he's been stretched so thin that he doesn't really have any substantial defense on any of his lanes or any of his ramps, and that's going to be a big, big issue now as uh, Proxy just begins to uh, compound on the, the unit advantage he has. He has spinners in his compositions, which will put pain to the uh, to the bomber defense. Not to mention the air superiority at this point in, uh, in favor of proxy. And proxy obviously has the greater vehicle production because of the greater number of factories. And ever growing still with the commanders around there. It's not suffering at all in the uh, economy at this point because Admiral has been neglecting to reign. I think he's tried it, but the defense from proxy is just too strong. And uh, once you get the air game like this, you know, the, the, unless you have spinners in your army, then the bombers are going to wreak havoc. But if you have spinners in your army, then you're going to have fewer ants in your army. And, you know, you've got to weigh up the ratio of, okay, well, how am I going to deal with the anti air? versus how am I going to deal with the ground. But here we see Admiral going in for a very big push. He's using most of his forces at this point to try and push out on one side and uh, get Proxy on the back foot. But here it's just not going to work because he's running in with relatively equal numbers there. Most of them Inferno, so we haven't got too much in the way of ranged damage dealers other than docks, blimey. Um, Meanwhile, on this side, though, Proxy began being able to just push in, because why not? Does he have a skitter in his army? Yes, he does. He learnt. Good Proxy. Good Proxy. <laughs> Go around the back. Admiral beginning to expand, but pushing out. I don't think he's going to... Uh, no, he's not, unfortunately. So it's not quite going to work out for him here, I don't think. The turret... Shooting through the vehicle factory. The turret's not going to go down, but I think Admiral's just like, I gotta get in! I gotta get in! I don't care about the turret! I gotta get in! Meanwhile, on the front, though, Proxy managing to take down that entire plateau over there, managing to form that up for his own. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, he might decide to send in a fabricator of his own to maybe pop up the mechs there or a proxy base or something like that. 
But I think at this point he just wants to push in and see what damage he can do. But the defensive force is forming. The bomber is going to do nothing against the spinners, as we said earlier. We covered that. Uh, they are going to be able to shoot up the side, though. And this is the thing with an attacking force like this, because not only... Um, are they going to be able to attack the plateau and the units around the back? But while they go around the back, they can fire up the side. So it's real attacker's advantage. Defenders have very few advantages on lock. You just have to... You know, unless you've turtled up so stupendously hard and have the unit production, you're going to really struggle. And actually, Admiral at this point, really struggling with his economy, trying to get T2 up to maybe rectify this, but he's just... He needs to re-expand and hold his expansions. I think he's trying to around the back, but he does need a bit more than he's got at the moment. He's still stalling about 58 in the way of mechs. I mean, he needs to make a decision, I think, at this point, to run, the, to run his air factory or not, and to go for the T2 or not, because that T2 is going to be a risky choice, but if it pays off... You know, if he can get it up, and if he can get that fabricator out, then it might pay off, but the window is closing... As Proxy's unit count continues to climb, and uh, he's going to have a massive threat around the back to deal with. And this is the thing again: defenders, uh, aggressors' advantage. He's going to be able to push this uh, this plateau here reasonably well. Push the middle, and now Admiral has to d decide: Do I defend the front, or do I defend the back, or do I defend the side? And he can only defend one at a time with his unit for count, compared to Proxy's unit count. He likes to go for the front, which I, you know, I, I don't have any disagreements with that. Thing is, though, you want to let them come to you rather than the other way around. It's a ramp lip, and ramp lips do provide the defender's advantage on steep ramps. Not on shallow ones as such, but definitely on steep ramps. The ramp lip is the place that you want to hold and not push over. Equally, if you can uh, kite people down and over the edge of the ramp lip, then, you know, that's great to you. Commander sat here thinking, ooh, what do I do? I'm kind of stuck. Got a few units putting a bit of pressure on this advanced vehicle factory. And now they're just going to do ring a ring of roses around the factory there. Inferno is trying to chomp at the bit there, trying to take down the advanced factory, cancelling the advanced fabricator while trying to uh, repair and or assist out this uh, leveller. But he's actually paused the energy so that the factory itself isn't producing. Trying to get the, um, the economy working. He's had to pause all of his other factories in order to get this T2 out and that's oh dear and the leveler just moving straight down into the infernos he wants to send them off the other side oh this isn't great news for Admiral General especially now that he has more units coming in from the back damaging out his uh, his regular vehicle factories back there he has bought enough time for his units to get back but still that's an investment and a half that he didn't want to make and now Proxy is just everywhere and is out of control. hes <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he had T2 in his base by now, but he hasn't bothered. He's just overwhelming with T1 basic units. And uh, Admiral has been fought into a corner. And uh, I know we can't see the GGs in, in postcasts like this, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they weren't far off at all. If that, that is, if they hadn't already been called. Not at this point, it's just a case of proxy mopping up. Mopping up the rest of the stuff. There's nothing really left for... Uh, for Admiral to do here, other than watch his base get chewed. Chewed through. Here come the ants. 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 Ants, ants. That's about it. Commander fleeing off into the sunset. Don't be M. Um, if you're beaten, admit it. <laughs> Combat fab healing the commander up to 100%. <laughs> Proxy now, of course, is going to see, oh, your commander's running? Well, I'm going to cut you off at the front. Or is he? Or is he not going to bother? Yeah, he should. There we go. Cut you off at the front. Has he got skitters in the army? Nope. He's neglected them again. 
But why should he bother with them? Because, well, he knows he's fought the dude back. Why does he need to bother worrying about uh, mines if he hasn't had a chance to build them? But the commander valiantly defending in his last moments of his life, thinking, what do I do? What did I ever do to deserve this? And as he gets surrounded, and ever more fought off, as we zoom out into the distance, kaboom. Death, which was the commander. But yeah, that was that. Thanks for watching that one. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Levelers coming in on this side though, if they manage to target this commander, oh, that could be painful. Ubercan is desperately trying to go off, this commander needs to leg it. A few leveler shots, one more leveler shot! Ah, oh, so very close, he's on 6%! Blue pinging that commander like crazy, saying, oi, this guy's super low health, just get a few dudes over there. I think this commander realising he's outstayed his welcome, having to retreat through that teleporter, or maybe he just can't be bothered to go through the teleporter and is just going to leg it. But, ooh, a titan going up, an Ares titan? Blimey, what is this 3v3 doing? I haven't even got a clue. This is frantic. This is great fun to watch. <laughs> a few levelers going a little bit too far out there from Team Brown. Need to come back, maybe regroup with all the levers. This side, though, Brown pushing out a little bit as well, doing a bit of raiding there with the docks, managing to take down four mechs and a galata, a few tanks here as well, doing this.